heart disease is the number one killer in the world. Here in the United States, 695,000 people die from heart disease every single year, with a person dying from heart disease every 33 seconds. It turns out there's only one cause of heart disease, that's damage to the blood vessels. When your blood vessels get damaged, your blood vessels vasoconstrict, it depletes a molecule called nitric oxide, and then inflammation goes up. That's when bad things start to happen. The good news is this. In this lesson, I've outlined five different shots. Take it every day to open up your arteries, lower inflammation, and prevent heart disease from being in your future. I'm gonna outline these five different shots, the research to why I chose them, and how to make them every single day. The first shot will be extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil is a monounsaturated fat loaded with a polyphenol called oleocanthals and oleic acid. Oleic acid is known for its heart healthy properties. Studies show when you consume oleic acid on a regular basis, it lowers your small LDL particles and raises your HDL particles, which protects your arteries. It's kind of like your arteries janitorial system. The antioxidants and polyphenols in olive oil are known to protect against oxidative stress. Olive oil contains vitamin E, polyphenols, and yellowropein. These antioxidants, they neutralize free radicals in the body, reducing oxidative damage to cells and tissues. Regular consumption of olive oil may contribute to overall antioxidant protection, which is a very important factor when we talk about heart disease. Olive oil also contains other bioactive compounds, which have potent anti-inflammatory effects. Chronic inflammation is linked to heart disease, and olive oil can drastically reduce your risk of chronic inflammation, leading to a lowered risk of heart disease. One of the largest studies out there on olive oil called the Pre-Med Study cited a Mediterranean diet, which included high amounts of extra virgin olive oil, and they found that participants at higher risk of cardiovascular disease who consumed this extra virgin olive oil diet experienced a significant reduction in major cardiovascular events, about 30% less risk of cardiovascular events compared to those on a low fat diet, which did not include extra virgin olive oil. The study involved over 7,400 participants over a 4.8 year follow-up period. Another study from Harvard Research, which was a long-term study involving over 90,000 US participants, showed that consuming more than half a tablespoon of olive oil per day was associated with a 15% lower risk of cardiovascular disease and a 21% lower risk of coronary heart disease. Other studies have shown that extra virgin olive oil lowers inflammation, improves endothelial function, reduces high blood pressure, which are all risk factors for heart disease. In some European studies, for example, regular olive oil consumption was associated with a 44% lower risk of coronary heart disease in specific populations such as Italian women. And I'll drop all those studies down below. Now, when it comes to olive oil, I'll share with you how to make it into a shot, but you wanna make sure it is legitimate olive oil. Unfortunately, a lot of people who manufacture and sell olive oil, they don't do it the right way. Either it's rancid or it's cut with an inflammatory seed oil. You wanna make sure your olive oil is extra virgin, organic, cold pressed, and in a dark glass bottle. I personally use a company called the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. They're hands down the cleanest, healthiest, best tasting olive oil in the world. You know it's clean and it's legit because when you take a shot of it, it should burn your throat. It should make your tongue feel a little fuzzy. Heck, it should even make you cough. That's a sign of an olive oil that is loaded with these polyphenols. What you don't wanna notice or see is taking a shot of olive oil and it going down smooth. That's a sign of a cheap olive oil. So if you wanna get your hands on a $39 bottle of this fresh pressed olive oil club, healthiest olive oil in the world, you can get it for $1 over at ketocampoliveoil.com and I'll drop it down below. So how do you make this shot of olive oil? Do this every single morning. You're simply, this is very simple, you're going to grab a shot glass or a cup and pour a tablespoon of that high quality olive oil and take it as a shot. Doesn't break your fast. Heck, you could even have it later in the day if you're feeling hungry in between meals and you wanna kinda just make that hunger go away, keep that hunger at bay, take a shot of olive oil as well. But do it at least once per day, one tablespoon of a shot of olive oil, be consistent with it, and you'll dramatically lower your risk of heart disease. The second shot is 
garlic chopped up. And I'll share with you a little recipe on how to make it. But first, let's get into why I chose garlic. Garlic has been shown to significantly lower the small particle count of LDL, the bad, what's considered a bad cholesterol. For example, studies suggest that garlic could reduce high amounts of bad cholesterol by as much as 16 points, particularly in those who had high bad cholesterol. Garlic has also been shown to be really promising when it comes to lowering blood pressure. High levels of blood pressure puts you at risk for heart disease. And several clinical trials, which I'll drop in the references down below, demonstrated that garlic can lower blood pressure in individuals with hypertension. Garlic sulfur-containing compounds, such as allicin, are believed to promote vasodilation and improve vascular function, which helps reduce blood pressure. When we have the opposite, vasoconstriction, it raises your blood pressure levels because your heart has to pump harder. So with vasodilation, it opens up those blood vessels. The heart does not have to work as hard, which lowers your blood pressure levels. Garlic may also slow the progression of atherosclerosis, which is the thickening of artery walls due to plaque buildup. The effect is particularly pronounced in people at high risk of cardiovascular disease. Garlic's antioxidant properties reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. Both are key to contributors to cardiovascular diseases. This helps to protect the blood vessels and support overall health. Now taking a shot of garlic is quick and simple, and I'm gonna share with you how to do it. So here are the ingredients. One fresh garlic clove, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, and honey. You're gonna peel the garlic clove, remove the skin from the clove, ensuring it's clean and fresh. You're gonna crush up or mince the garlic. When you crush it or mince it, it releases the allicin component that we're looking for here, which is the key component of garlic that contributes to all the health benefits. Let it sit for about five to 10 minutes, which allows the allicin to fully develop, then take a shot. You could swallow the mixed garlic on its own or add some water, the lemon juice, the apple cider vinegar. It's easy to take for some people. Now you could chase it down with water or lemon water to wash it down and to avoid that lingering garlic taste. You could choose some mint or parsley afterwards so you don't have that garlic breath. The third shot is raw honey. Several human studies have investigated the potential role of raw honey in reducing the risk of heart disease. Raw honey, known for its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and lipid-lowering properties, is often considered a much healthier alternative to sugar and refined sugar. A study published in the journal of Food Medicine titled Effective Honey on Lipid Profiles in Diabetic Patients involved 70 individual participants with type 2 diabetes. And the participants who consumed honey daily for eight weeks showed a significant significant decrease in total cholesterol, but also low density lipoprotein, the small sticky variety, compared to those who consumed sugar, sucrose. HDL cholesterol, which is protective, remained unchanged in the study. Another study in Nutrition Journal titled Honey Supplementation Enhances Antioxidant Capacity in Individuals had 60 healthy adults. And the individuals who took raw honey supplements for 12 weeks exhibited increased levels of antioxidant enzymes such as superoxide dismutase and reduce markers of oxidative stress. Honey has also been shown to regulate blood pressure levels. The study in clinical nutrition titled Honey Intake and Blood Pressure in Hypertensive Patients found that daily consumption of raw honey for just six weeks led to a modest but significant reduction in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure compared to a control group consuming sugar. The Journal of Inflammation Research had a study titled Effects of Honey on Inflammatory Markers in Overweight Individuals. The study showed that those who incorporated raw honey into their diet for 10 weeks showed decreased levels of C-reactive protein, which is a very important inflammation test to assess your risk of heart disease. Some doctors consider it the gold standard of testing your risk of heart disease. This is because honey contains various antioxidants, including flavonoids and phenolic acids, which help neutralize free radicals and reduce oxidative stress. It also contains anti-inflammatory compounds that help lower inflammation, a known contributor to heart disease. So here's how you're gonna take your shot of honey. One tablespoon of raw honey, you could use some lemon juice for the added antioxidants and vitamin C, and warm water for dilution. You'll take that one tablespoon of raw honey, which is unprocessed honey, mix the honey with the lemon juice and the water, and then take a shot. It actually tastes pretty delicious. This does break a fast, so have it during your eating window, but get all the benefits of honey by taking a shot of it this way. The fourth item is cayenne pepper. A lot of human studies indicate that cayenne pepper 
particularly its active compound capsaicin, may reduce the risk of heart disease through several mechanisms. Let's discuss some of these studies. A large analysis of international studies found that people who regularly consume chili peppers, including cayenne, had a significantly reduced risk of cardiovascular mortality. This particular study suggests a 26% lower risk of heart disease among regular chili pepper consumers compared to the non-consumers. The Mayo Clinic has a study showing that capsaicin, the active compound in cayenne pepper, has been shown to reduce inflammation, which plays a major role in the development of atherosclerosis and other cardiovascular diseases. By lowering inflammation, cayenne pepper may help to prevent plaque buildup in the arteries, which is a major contributor to heart attacks and strokes. Cayenne pepper also improves blood circulation by increasing nitric oxide production, which helps to dilate the blood vessels and reduce blood pressure. This effect promotes better blood flow and may reduce the risk of high blood pressure and heart-related complications. I mentioned nitric oxide earlier. It's one of the most important gaseous molecules in your body, not just responsible for vasodilation, which is the opening up of your arteries, but also it's a cell communication, a cell signaling molecule that is so important. And studies suggest cayenne capsaicin helps to increase nitric oxide production. A little bonus tip to cayenne, studies suggest that regular consumption of cayenne pepper may regulate body weight by improving metabolic efficiency and promoting fat burning. It does this through its thermogenic effects. So how do you consume this cayenne pepper? Let's talk about the recipe here. You're gonna start with one fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, so really small, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one fourth cup of warm water, and you could even include the honey we spoke about earlier. You're gonna mix it all together in a glass and take a shot. If it's too spicy, you can add a little bit more honey to balance out the heat, but if you like spicy, that's the perfect recipe for you. The next item to take a shot of is lemon juice. And I know we spoke about lemon juice already, but let me explain why this should be included. Lemon juice has anti-hypertensive effects. Lemon juice contains citric acid, which has been shown to reduce blood pressure. In studies with both humans and animals, lemon juice demonstrated the ability to relax blood vessels, which could lower systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Lemon juice has also been shown to improve cholesterol levels, your lipid levels. Human studies have shown that lemon juice can lower LDL cholesterol, the small particle bad cholesterol, while improving HDL cholesterol. This balance is essential for protecting yourself against heart disease. Lemon juice is loaded with antioxidants and vitamin C, which reduce oxidative stress in the body. The antioxidant activity helps to prevent damage to the arteries caused by free radicals, further lowering your risk of heart disease. So here's how to make the shot of lemon juice. You get one to two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, warm water for dilution, and you can even add the honey we spoke about earlier, and even that pinch of cayenne pepper, put it all together in one shot. Mix it and take a shot. Not only will it help to prevent heart disease and lower inflammation, it'll give you an energy kick to start your day. So it would be best to have this in the morning. And I wanted to throw in a bonus shot to take every single day. This is the sixth item here, and that's gonna be apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has been studied for its potential health benefits for the heart. Several studies have suggested that apple cider vinegar can lower total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. Now, in general, we don't really concern ourselves with total cholesterol, it's kind of a meaningless marker, but LDL cholesterol is something you do want to pay attention to. A 2021 meta-analysis found that apple cider vinegar consumption had a moderate impact on reducing total cholesterol, especially in people with diabetes. They also noticed that they had less plaque buildup in the arteries and less LDL cholesterol. There is some evidence showing that apple cider vinegar helps to reduce blood pressure, potentially improving circulation and lowering the pressure in arteries. And we all know this, apple cider vinegar is really important for managing blood sugar and insulin spikes. When I said in the beginning, there's only one cause to heart disease, damage to the blood vessel, there are many things that contribute to that, but the number one leading cause that damages blood vessels are high insulin levels, insulin spikes. And if you could blunt those insulin and glucose spikes, you're gonna be better off. Apple cider vinegar is one of the best ways to do so. Numerous studies show when you consume apple cider vinegar during a fast, it lowers your blood glucose levels. It improves insulin sensitivity. Having it before a meal lowers postprandial glucose, which is the glucose response from a meal. Now, what you can do is take a tablespoon of high quality apple cider vinegar, dilute it with water, drink it through a straw, that'll be your shot. Now, I personally don't 
take apple cider vinegar in the form of liquid. I use a high quality capsule and the company that I use is Paleo Valley. It includes apple cider vinegar and other superfoods. I'll take two to three either in a fasted state before a meal or even after a meal to get these benefits. And I'll drop a link for the Paleo Valley apple cider vinegar complex with a 15% code attached to the link in the notes down below. Now that we discussed the five, actually six shots to take to lower your risk of heart disease and open up the blood vessels, I'm gonna answer the top questions I get asked when we talk about this topic. The first question is, Ben, my total cholesterol is 250. Should I be worried? Uh, your doctor's probably worried, but I would say this, I said it a little while ago, total cholesterol is a meaningless marker. I would be more concerned when somebody has a total cholesterol of 200 or less than a cholesterol of 250, 300. I mean, heck, I just did 90 days of a carnivore diet, nothing but fat and protein. My total cholesterol went over 400, but that's not the biggest concern. Cholesterol is vital for the brain and your hormones for vitamin D production. So personally, I would not be concerned with a total cholesterol over 200, I would celebrate it. And when you typically eat fat and keto or carnivore, saturated fat, healthy fats, you, some people might see that go up, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because inflammation drops. Which leads me to the next question. If total cholesterol is not an accurate marker for heart disease, what are the best lab markers to assess my risk of heart disease? That's gonna be a full lipid panel. So yeah, get a total cholesterol, but also get a total LDL. So let's start from the beginning here. Total cholesterol, total LDL, total HDL, total triglycerides, but also with the LDL, you wanna get the particle sizes. It's called the NMR profile. NMR stands for nuclear magnetic resonance. With the LDL, again, with the total LDL, there is a good LDL, which is called the pattern A, large and fluffy, which is protective for your arteries, great for the immune system, great for longevity. Then you have the pattern B, small sticky LDL, which actually damages the blood vessels. So that NMR test, the particle sizes, will show you if the majority of your LDL is a small sticky bad, large fluffy good. Just looking at total LDL doesn't give you the full picture. With your HDL, you wanna see that over 60, that is high density lipoprotein, that is protective. With your triglycerides, when that's high, that's inflammatory, you want that under 90, that would be great. And on top of that, I would throw in a fasting insulin, you want that in the single digits, and a high sensitivity C-reactive protein, we spoke about it earlier, you want that under one. That is gonna give you a full look at your heart and risk of heart disease. Now, if all that is great and your doctor is still concerned, or maybe you're still concerned, then you could go get a calcium score done, which looks at plaque buildup, soft plaque buildup in your arteries. And you want that to be a zero. That is a more expensive test. It's not a blood test, it's more of a scan, but you can get that done if you wanna cover all the bases here. Next question is, what's the best diet to prevent heart disease? You know, most people would think it's a plant-based vegan diet. That's actually the opposite of what you wanna to do to prevent heart disease. We've been fed a whole bunch of lies. Uh, there's a term I've coined called lipophobia, which I wrote about in my brand new book coming out next year called Metabolic Freedom. Lipophobia is the fear of dietary fat based off of 50 plus years of propaganda and misinformation. It's not high quality fat that increases your risk of heart disease. It does the opposite and protects you against heart disease. It's the inflammatory fats like the seed oils that contribute to heart disease. It's the sugar, the processed carbohydrates, the glucose and insulin spike. So when you ask me what's the best diet to prevent heart disease, that's gonna be a clean keto diet. That's gonna be a carnivore diet. And surprising to many people listening or watching, that's gonna be a diet that's meat-based, red meat-based. It's not the burger, that's inflammatory and causes heart disease, it's what the burger is in, the bun. So if you just eat the burger, you're gonna lower risk of heart disease, lower inflammation, and burn some fat at the same time. So I love a keto diet, I love a carnivore diet. I have several podcast episodes and videos on the keto and the carnivore diet. Next question is, doesn't eating the red meat and saturated fat cause the heart disease? Well, we just debunked that. The reason we believe, I should say most people believe, that cholesterol and saturated fat causes heart disease is because of what happened a very long time ago in the 1950s. A researcher named Ansel Keys worked with the United States government and he set out to prove his hypothesis that high cholesterol and a high saturated fat diet causes heart disease. So he had a bias and he did a 22 country study, but most of the countries did not correlate to his hypothesis. So he only chose seven out of the 22 countries. He only chose to publish those seven, showing a link between these countries. They consume the most saturated fat and they have the highest 
rates of heart disease. And what he didn't share is that the other countries didn't show that, number one. And number two, those seven countries were not eating healthy fats. They were eating rancid trans fats. Yet, he gave that information to the government, they ran with it, boom, came the low-fat craze. And we're still dealing with it today because a lie told often enough becomes the truth. And Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the 21st century is not those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. We need to unlearn the myth that saturated fat and cholesterol causes heart disease. It is not. It is the fake fats and the sugar and the insulin and the inflammation that causes it. So the answer would be no, red meat and saturated fat does not contribute to heart disease. It does the opposite. Next question is what are some hidden causes of heart disease that nobody talks about? Well, this brings me to, back to nitric oxide. Anything that depletes nitric oxide will increase your risk of heart disease. So what depletes nitric oxide? Well, surprisingly so, antiseptic mouthwash, Listerine, Scope. It's one of the quickest ways to destroy nitric oxide in your mouth, lower nitric oxide in your body, raise blood pressure, and significantly increase your risk of heart disease. Crazy. We see that these mouthwashes, say, kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. That is true. But you know the bacteria that it kills as well? The good guys in your mouth that converts certain foods, like green leafy vegetables, into nitric oxide in your body. So we've seen people who are on mouthwash have high blood pressure. For men, erectile dysfunction, and all of this leads to an increased risk of heart disease. So we do not want to consume antiseptic mouthwash. Second thing is breathing through your mouth during sleep. When you are a chronic mouth breather during sleep or just throughout the day, that also depletes nitric oxide. So something I personally do, I put a mouth tape over my mouth. I know it sounds crazy, but it forces me to breathe through my nose, which increases nitric oxide, lowers blood pressure, lowers risk of heart disease. I use a company called Somnifix for my mouth tape. I'll drop a link for them down below. Another surprising cause of heart disease is toxins. When you have a high load of toxins, environmental toxins, heavy metals like mercury, lead, cadmium, this is gonna increase cell inflammation, vasoconstrict, and lead to a lot of problems. And I don't have enough time in this lesson to get into toxins, but you could go to toxinmiami.com to take a free quiz to assess your level of toxicity. And another hidden cause of heart disease, this may not be hidden to some people, but a sedentary lifestyle. If you're not moving and not getting steps, you're not activating the lymphatic system, you're not getting things moving along, vasodilating, you're actually doing the opposite. Your lymphatic system is stagnant, your inflammation goes up, blood pressure goes up too, you're packing on fat, all bad things. So what would be the step count to get? Well, studies suggest that individuals who get just five to 7,000 steps per day have a 50 to 70% less likelihood of dying of all-cause mortality versus those who get less than 3,000 steps per day. So what you wanna do is get at least 5,000 steps per day with the sweet spot going over 10K per day to get not just fat loss, but a lowered risk of heart disease and all-cause mortality. Next question is, the American Heart Association says canola oil is healthy. Is this true? I'm sure you've gone to the grocery store and you see their stamp of approval on canola and seed oils. And I'm here to tell you that that is not heart healthy at all. There's a lot of propaganda going on here. When I interviewed Dr. Kay Shanahan, who's a medical doctor, New York Times bestselling author, Kobe Bryant's former nutritionist for the Los Angeles Lakers and a dear friend of mine, I said, Dr. Kay, which scenario is going to lead to heart disease faster? Smoking cigarettes every day, option one, eating processed sugar every day, option two, or consuming vegetable oils like canola oil every day, option three. She said, Ben, that is an easy question. It is the vegetable oils, hands down. She said, look, smoking is not good for you, but when you finish the last puff, you've done your damage. She said, processed sugar is not good either, but you could exercise, burn it off, and reduce the sugar spike. But these vegetable oils, including canola oil, stay in your body, creating inflammation for years. The half-life of these seed oils is 680 days, meaning if you stop eating them today, about two years later, 680 days later, they will be in your body, in your body fat, creating inflammation. So we wanna avoid canola, corn, cotton seed oil. We want to avoid sunflower, soybean, safflower oil. We want to avoid rice bran, grapeseed oil, and we want to avoid refined peanut oil. She called, Dr. Kate Shanahan calls the American Heart Association the biggest fake news organization in America. A lot of the studies that show seed oils are healthy are funded by Big Pharma and the American Heart Association, and there's a lot of money to be made from them, from sick people. So instead we want saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, butter, 
ghee, beef tallow, duck fat, coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, these are healthier fats for your body. When I go to restaurants, I tell the server I'm allergic to canola and seed oils. Can you use a healthier alternative? And I use this seed oil card, which you just show it to them and they'll accommodate to get healthier fats. And you can get this for free over at seedoilcard.com. I'll drop that link down below. If you enjoyed this lesson, I want you to watch a video I just published on your body is trying to warn you, seven signs of early heart disease. Here's a clip, watch this video next. You might never even suspect they're putting your life at risk. These stealthy symptoms can easily be mistaken for everyday health issues leading to a false sense of security. The first warning sign is shortness of breath. 